Hello, what it does it here? Some of you are criticizing me that I'm only showing dark side radiators in my test and therefore I have some sort of hidden agenda. Which is pure nonsense because what I try to show you is general guidance, what's happening with Cygnus radiator became bigger or smaller or size of radiator became bigger and smaller and things like this. But nevertheless, I listen to your feedback and I decide to give you some reference guide based on one of the most popular radiators on the market. I reached AK, asked them to help me out a little bit and they was nice enough to give me demo discount on a few units and therefore we can have this test today. So thank you AK for support. Three models we will talk about, you can see that they look absolutely identical but the real difference is here. So if we turn them for 90 degrees, we can see how the different they are. So the smallest one is SE series. I haven't chance to review it, but it's very similar to XE that we looked at. So it's very thin radiator, 25 millimeters, medium FPI, which is a really good number. It's 17 FPI and it's shrouded as any other models coming from AK in those days. The second model, a little bit older, this is a PE360 series. It has a different core because it's older model, so it's a little bit higher density core, 20 FPI, but we already tested it, the difference on FPI, actually it's a little bit more overblown in mind of people, so the difference wouldn't be skew our test result as much as different as sickness that plays a little bit bigger role. And Cygnus radiator 45 millimeters, so basically not double, but getting about 1.5 times bigger. And final one, and the biggest uh, radiator in our lineup is XE. This bo baby is about uh, 65 millimeters thick, if I am not mistaken. And they have the same medium FPI numbers, 17, the same as the first one. And also it has a slight different from other models. They have extra two ports. So you can have ports from one side and can port from other side. And the fans used in this test is F4 Vardars. It's a 2200 rated fence, but in order to keep our tests consistent and so we can look back on my other radiator test and maybe have some correlation with Monster, whatever other models we used, I, I would like to use the same speeds of the fans for our test. So we, we slow down them a little bit to 2000 RPM as a performance setup and 1100 RPM for people who value low noise. Speaking about the rest of my test bench, we discussed it many times. It's exactly the same, no changes here. Some specs here, you can see here. And uh, it's SLI overclocked system. We have a couple D5 and things like this and everything is equalized to 22 degrees in the room temperature because the room temperature will fluctuate depending on what we're doing. It's not temporally control, thermally controlled but nevertheless we're trying to equalize it to the same number and all graphs will show average temperature for the CPU cores so that it was recorded during the test. So I wouldn't expect any difference as I said before from my previous test but nevertheless let's look what uh, bigger radiators basically buys or not buys for us if we try to run it for real in our system but before we go into actual numbers and give you some recommendation what to do in each particular configuration setup let's look into the costs as well because you know going from a small radiator to bigger radiator you pay extra money Mostly is because of the material, of because if we look, let's say, in the first one and the last one, it's almost as twice as, as twice as much metal used in it. That's why you have a premium going higher and higher with, each, with, with bigger and bigger data. So if we set up the smallest SE as a baseline, kind of zero, and we're going to P, our premium through my own store is 24 bucks. So we go a little bit secret data, we pay 24 Canadian bucks. If we go into the biggest model, the premium from the first to second will be already 44 bucks. So that's approximate. I, I understand that many of you guys in different countries and you have your own currency, but just give you some idea that we we getting high and high with each model and you can figure out what exactly numbers in your own country if you're really interesting so. And let's look now more carefully what it gives us. Have to use this uh, piece of paper again. Some people really hate that I use piece of paper but the real reason I don't have a teleprompter and I can't remember everything so I need a cheat sheet. That's what it is, not trying to look too smart. 
So, first type of setup is we have only CPU overclock, GPU do nothing, and we have a slow fan. So we have 1100 RPM fans, and what we have, what we getting if we use one, two, or three model in our setup. Basically, the truth is, is uh, for low speed fans, uh, we basically have the same almost identical numbers for radiators one and two, SE and PE, and we have a slightly bleep about two, three degrees if we go on a secret radiator. So bigger secret core gives a slightly advantage. Is it worth extra money or not? It's up to you to decide, but realistically, it's no difference if you go from the small to middle, and it's a small difference if you go to the third one. Now, if we speed up the fan, actually the situation became a little bit even worse because the difference between XE and other two, it goes basically to nothing. So it doesn't matter what you use, if you have a really low heat output in your system and have a good fast fans running your radiators, buying bigger radiators makes absolutely no difference and it's just a waste of money and you may uh, the only reason why you would like to do it, it's possibly for the looks and that you pursue in your particular build. But in terms of performance, it's absolutely a waste of resources here. Let's now look what's happening when we try to stretch performance of our system to the limit. Benching both GPUs and CPUs make us three components. And my general recommendation to any builder of water cooling systems is that triple absolutely minimum. So you can't use the dual, it will be not enough to cool your system. So we're stretching system to thermal limit. And now we'll look what's, what's happening when we have a thin, medium or secret data and uh, if we get any advantage here. First of all, let's look on a slow, um, speed fan situation. This is uh, trying to bring our system to the brink of its capacity. We have a maximum heat output, at the same time we have really slow, weak fans pushing little air through the radiators. To my big surprise, and I retested a couple times, I got exactly the same number for scene as E and for the slightly thicker P series. My explanation for that is I think what's happening here, we have slightly different core, more dense core, and I think that uh, actual fans on slow speed, they have real trouble to push air as efficiently through the radiator as they did with less dense SE series, and airflow compensated for the less surface numbers for because of the high density fins. So basically, it means that if we're looking for low speed application for both radiators, it absolutely make no financial diff um, sense to buy P-series over SE because you gain absolutely nothing. So unless you really need those 45 millimeters for looks, it absolutely makes no, no sense to buy P-series over SE. Now, if we look on the much bigger XE series, then we start getting something and we get the same two, three degrees difference over other two radiators. Is it worth it not? It's up to you to decide extra money, but maybe for looks or you just really milking every degree for whatever reason you're after, then XE makes sense to put in if you can fit it, of course, in your case. Now, Final number, I think it makes most interest for most of you because if we're going for the minimum recommended size of radiator, it makes absolutely no sense to also use slow fans. So people who use a recommended number of cores for your system is usually run fast fans. So now we have a triple radiator with 2000 RPM fans. What we're getting? Now we start seeing clear difference between all units. So if we look in uh, numbers, between smallest radiator and um, the medium radiator, I got about three degrees difference. So we have a higher core, fast fans, and, th and the thickness played into three different difference. And if we're talking about XE from the first to, to, the, to the last, now we get a healthy, nine degrees difference and six degrees difference bet between PE. So you see, so if we use fast fans and really hot system, then sick radiators make absolutely no brainer difference and totally worth it money. If we're looking for any other scenarios that we discussed a little bit earlier, then the difference became less meaningful and I don't think it's worth to spend money, extra money on, on a bigger radiator because you can't really get enough advantage of it. All right guys, that's what we're having here. Again, thank you EK to helping out with this 
this little project we have actually part two but i would like to separate it in a different video and we also will look into this uh, xe360 and ce420 both triple radiators one is a seeker and other is wider and this will be another interesting thing to look but i don't want to mix it with this one so for now we will finish up thank you for you for watching this episode coming back soon with more stuff on Dazzlab. see you soon